Hi everyone, and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Today we're going to be discussing polarity and solubility, the connection between whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, and how that affects what it interacts with, or what it will dissolve in it, what it will dissolve in, and kind of how those intermolecular attractions um, factor in. Um, so we've been discussing about the, that molecules can be either polar or nonpolar, depending on whether they contain polar covalent bonds and overall asymmetry. So polar covalent bonds involving a slight positive and a slight negative charge, or kind of those ends, um, and that we need overall asymmetry. So the molecule itself um, has a, an imbalance of electrons, that they might be more commonly found at one end and not the other. And that we also then... Um, have looked at this idea that where there are interactions between molecules or where one molecule molecule A of, of, of type A can interact with molecule of type B, that then that leads to solubility, that those two things will mix together because they can be surround, surrounded by one another. Um, so we, we looked at ethanol and water, that because they're able to interact with each other, there's an intermolecular attraction that exists, that then that means that ethanol can be soluble in water. Okay, and so the principle we mentioned in the previous video, and we're going to kind of unpack a little bit more now, is this phenomenon called like dissolves like. Okay. So when we're looking at unpacking this statement, essentially what we're saying is that polar substances or polar solutes will dissolve or be soluble in polar solvents. And that nonpolar substances or solutes will dis dissolve will be soluble in nonpolar solvents. So that polar and nonpolar don't mix, but polar and polar and nonpolar and nonpolar will. Okay, so if we have a look at our water molecule and then looking at our reminding ourselves of our ethanol molecule, okay, that we saw that there was an, an intermolecular at attraction or interaction that we called hydrogen bonding that can exist between these molecules, okay? That then, that means that ethanol is soluble in water. Okay, but let's then see if I were to take um, this substance, ethane, which is a gas, as it turns out, but that's not super important for purposes of this exercise. Okay, if I were to take ethane and try to make it help it to interact with water, that it would not work. Now, the reason is that ethane is nonpolar, whereas water is polar. Okay, that we have a negative end and a positive end. But we've talked about this idea in the past that carbon hydrogen bonds is, uh, is a not, essentially a nonpolar bond. Okay, that's really important to remember because that has a lot to do with the behavior of hydrocarbons. Okay, and that's going to affect, you know, lots and lots of different things. That the idea that we have nonpolar bonds and we in this particular molecule we also have no asymmetry, like it's a completely symmetrical molecule. So it's a nonpolar molecule. Now, the idea is that these, the fact that this has got a positive and negative end here has nothing over here to interact with specifically. Okay, that we have dispersion forces that can exist between these two molecules, um, but that's about it. Um, and those interactions are not very strong um, because um, of the, you know, the difference in the kind of their size and they're both small molecules. And so there's, there's really not much, you know, not much of an interaction going on at all. And so what that means is that then um, that ethane is not soluble in water. Okay, because it can't interact with it. Um, it can't. There, there are very little, by the way, of intermolecular attractions. So therefore, water molecules are not going to surround them and therefore dissolve them. And the reality is that these molecules will actually, rather than just not attracting together, that they actually tend to repel each other. Um, that they tend to push away from each other. So we, we say that um, ethane and molecules that are like it are hydrophobic that they actually push water away, that then it's one reason why we tend to see if you put oil and water together, that the oil tends to stick to itself, to it, you know, that water, the, the 
the oil particles will tend to kind of clump together and then the water particles will tend to clump together but they're very difficult to actually mix that you know we have to be rather uh, tricky and creative if we want them to interact with each other more um, in things like mayonnaise for example or a vinaigrette um, and so if we take a non-polar substance and we try to dissolve it in a polar one because there's no interactions that we will not be soluble whereas if we then say took ethane which is non-polar because of that non-polar carbon carbon bond and we mixed it with um, pentane which looks like this okay with hydrogens in all these spaces once again you see the tedium of this process but hey it's all for a value okay so this is called pentane okay and that what we get is that we get these strong kind of dispersion forces that can exist over here okay and so because they're quite strong that then we get solubility that then ethane is soluble in pentane or ethane and, and pentane will mix because there are interactions or attractions that can exist between these two substances which are both non-polar okay so wherever we have interactions we end up with solubility okay that where there's no interactions there's no solubility and so um, what we see is that polar substances Tend, will have interactions and attractions to polar solvents or you know polar substances to one another and then non-polar substances to one another as well okay and then that it helps us to explain the solubility and interaction of lots of different substances and why oil and water don't mix thanks very much for watching bye for now